Hey guys, welcome back to Kids for Code. My name is Calvin and today we will be learning about variable manipulation and user input for Java beginners. So first we're going to review the summary from the previous lesson. Number one, what is an integer? An integer is any whole number and it can be positive or negative. What is camel case? It's how we name variables with more than one word. By capitalizing the first letter of any other word besides the first word, which the first letter of that word is always lowercase. Write the line of code to initialize a string variable. So we have our data type, in this case string, our variable name, in this case code, and our data value, in this case kids for code. How do you print quotation marks? Use black slash quotation mark. Variable manipulation with math operators. Manipulating means changing our variables. Variables are always changing. So we take our statement int age equals 10, but we want to alter it because today is our birthday. How would we be able to do this? So we take our statement and add another statement to it. Age equals age plus one. So it takes the existing value of age, in this case 10, and adds one to it, making it 11. And age now equals 11. You can use other mathematical operators other than addition, such as subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus. There are also additional shortcuts you can use to make your coding easier. operations with integers and doubles. So we have our statement in age equals 10. And let's say we want to add a half year to our age. Double half year equals 0.5. And so we have a print statement where we add age and half year together. And the result is 10.5, which is a double, even though we add an integer and a double. Whenever you do mathematical operations with doubles and integers, the result will always be a double. And here is another example of this. In age equals 10, double half equals 0.5. So we want to figure out half of our age. So we have age times half. This will put 5.0, which is a double, even though we multiplied an integer and a double. 5.0 is a whole number, but is a double because of the 0. .0. Dividing integers. Integers only hold whole numbers. What happens if you divide a variable that holds 5 by another that holds 2? So we have int num1 equals 5 and int num2 equals 2. So we print out the result of this num1 divided by num2. So it's 5 divided by 2. And the result, you'd expect the result to be 2.5, right? But since num1 and num2 are both integers, a whole number will be printed. But in Java, since the number will not be rounded, it will be truncated. That means the decimals will just be taken off. In our example, 2 will be printed because 2.5 with no decimals is 2. Modulus. Modulus is a mathematical operator that we often use in programming languages. It allows us to get the remainder of a division operation. Let's look at the examples. 11 modulus 3 equals 2. This is because 11 divided by 3 equals 3 with the remainder of 2. So the result of mod 11 modulus 3 is 2, which is the remainder of the division problem. 5 modulus 2 equals 1, because 5 divided by 2 equals 2 with the remainder of 1. So that remainder is the answer for 5 modulus 2. And what if you divide something and there is no remainder? Like this one, 12 divided by 3 equals 4, with, and there's no remainder. 12 modulus 3 will equal 0, because there is no remainder. So guys, I will show you an example of mathematical operations in Eclipse. So let's create an integer, int num1 equals 12. And a double num2 equals 2.5. Let's multiply these two together in a print statement. System dot out dot print line num1 times num2. Let's check out the result. And there are some errors, and this is because I used a colon instead of a semicolon. And that is something that you should make sure you fix every time you run your code to make sure that you're using semicolons instead of colons. So I'm going to run it again, this time with the semicolon. 
So the result is a double. The double is a whole number, but it still is a double, and this is because we're multiplying a double by an integer. Let's say we want to update num1 and change the value. We can use a statement num1 equals num1 plus 10. And then let's print out the value of num1 to see what how it got changed. And let's see what happens. So the first line is the result of our previous calculation, but the second line, the result of updating num1. As you can see, it's 22 because we're taking the existing value of num1, which is 12, and adding 10 to it, making it 22. From now on, if we were to use num1 again, the value of it would be 22 and not 10 and not 12. Hey guys, now we will talk about user input. To get information from the user, you will get information from them from the keyboard. To do this, we use the scanner class. You do not have to worry about exactly what this means, but you do have to know a few things about it. So you want to have the line import java.util.asterisk semicolon before your public class. This means it's at the very top of your program. And you also want to have the line of code scanner keyboard equals new scanner system dot in before you ask for user input. And then this line of code will allow you to take user input and use it as a data variable for a va variable. So data equals keyboard dot next line is what you use for strings and data equals keyboard dot next in is what you use for integers. Step one is our import scanner statement. Number one, it's import java dot util dot asterisk semicolon. This statement tells Eclipse that you will be using the scanner found in the util package. You want to put this import statement above where you made a new class. And you must have this import statement in order to get user input. The next step is to create the keyboard scanner. And it's scanner keyboard equals new scanner system dot in. And you need the scanner before you can read or scan what the user types on their keyboard. And you may notice that this is similar to how we create other variables like strings. Since scanner is a data type, keyboard is the name of a variable, and the rest is what the variable will equal. As you can notice, you could see the similarities between String name equals John and scanner keyboard equals new scanner system dot in. Although scanner keyboard is a little bit more complicated. Step three, asking the user for input. After creating the scanner statement, you can now you can read what the user types. This line of code will help the user type in information. This line of code is first name equals keyboard dot next line. You may notice that there's a print statement at the top, but this print statement serves to let the user know that ne they need to type something in. And just in case you forgot, you use next line for words and phrases or strings and use next in for numbers, AKA integers. Notice that we usually have a print statement and then ask for input. This is to make sure that we are telling the user what we want them to input. Otherwise they won't know to type something and the rest of your code won't run until they enter something. So I will now show you a demo. Hey guys, now I'm showing a demo in Eclipse on user input. So we start with our import statement, import java dot util dot asterisk semicolon. Now this statement will allow us to use the util package. Then we need another statement to initialize the variable scanner. Scanner keyboard equals new scanner system dot in. It's important to make sure that system dot in is in parentheses. 
Now that we have both of these statements, we're ready to get the user's input. So let me make a variable that I want to equal the user input. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to make it a string, and I'm going to call it first name. I don't have to initialize it yet, so I just add a semicolon. Then I'm going to make a print statement to let the user know that I want them to give user input. Then below that, I make my variable first name equal to keyboard dot next line. Notice that I need parentheses after the next line part. Let's see if we got their user input correctly. We're going to respond back to the user's input with a greeting. So we're going to have some words in quotation marks and we're going to add our variable first name. And let's see what the result is. And again, as you can see, there's a problem when you use colons, so make sure that you use semicolons instead. So it prompts me to enter my first name. So I will enter it, Calvin, press enter, and then it says hi Calvin back. And this has been the user input demo. Now you can answer these questions based on what you have learned in this lesson. So question one, how can you add one to the value of an integer variable? Question two, what happens if you divide two integers? Three, what line of code will let the user enter in a word slash phrase? Four, what line of code will let the user enter in a number? And five, what is nine modulus four? If you're confused with any of these questions, feel free to watch the video again to help strengthen your understanding of these concepts. Bye, guys.